Christ in there. Yeah. Okay, so, so Nelson. Yes. There are certain fundamental building blocks of consciousness that everyone needs to grok to be able to move forward at any time, but especially right now. <clears throat> Why right now? Because now we are experiencing the fall of kingdoms. Yeah. Every single one of them. Every single ideology has failed. Right. Communism has failed. Yep. Capitalism has failed. Mm -hmm. All the religions have failed. Correct. All of the various philosophers that have heretofore <clears throat> contended for our consciousness and our attention, they've all failed. Right. All the governments have failed, but what is it that they've failed at? Well, control the people, maybe, would you say? Or? They have failed to achieve an adequate form of self-government. Right. That's what we're all about. Self-government. Because at some point, you know, you find that, um, you know, you'll, you'll create this government and it's for the people, by the people. And then before you know it, power, uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, just to take like one of those ideas at a time. The people, the essence of human relationships, families, communities, nations, world, is uh, a fundamental agreement. Right. If we cannot agree, we too cannot walk. Right. Unless we agree. Exactly. So the reason there's so much conflict around in the earth right now is that nobody feels like they are in agreement with anyone else because we're all fighting yeah for survival right however wouldn't you say i mean there's obviously enough resources there's an abundance of resources that's just being hoarded by a select few um so this shouldn't be the way and we okay, are right. why isn't it why well how is it that we get to a situation in humanity 10 billion and all of the natural resources on the earth are controlled by who really knows? The elite, not us. Right. They run corporations, governments, sheikdoms, dictatorships. Yes. They're, they're controlling all of the natural resources. And the reason they're able to do it is because the people do not know their power. Exactly. They do not know their birthright. The idea of birthright right. is what has been hidden. Mm -hmm. This is what all the religions hid. This is what all the philosophies hid. No, I, the Constitution, they talk about what a great thing it was. And no less a personage as Obama said, well, the one thing everybody does realize is that there were no economic rights mm -hmm. enumerated. Correct. So we the people have been fighting dictators, kings, warlords, then we form these governments that they end up using to control us and put us into war and create all sorts of fear and doubt to justify the appropriation of everything. So here's the beauty of, of our moment now. Universal birthright is the idea that we all have a claim to a share of the natural resources. Right. It's like, um, it's not communism where the state has a claim and all the resources and they decide what to do with it, which is the same as the other version, capitalism where the corporations have all, they decide. Right. This is different in that as the oil revenue comes up out of the land now, mm -hmm. you see, we're not going to change anything physically. Right. Yeah, I mean, things are going to We're going to change things 
in people's minds about what is right. As it comes up out of the ground now, it goes to governments or to oligarchs. I say it gets distributed equally to every man, woman, and child by the sole virtue of birth, just birth. Right. And that becomes our economic base. Okay, now I would ask you this, and let me ask you a question. So, you know, we, at, at this point in society where we're taking a huge pivot um, into recognizing what hasn't been working, um, you know, all this history uh, behind us, but let me ask you this. So now that at least a lot of light um, is starting to be shed onto, you know, the different groups and the elites and who they actually are, like the Bilderbergs or the Rockefellers or whatever the case may be, right? Um, uh, we st how do we take back control? How, what would you say is our solution? It's not anarchy. We use the magic words. Okay. Yeah! You see, humans' populations are controlled by words. There are actually a few magic words that are used uh, communist is a magic word. Capitalist is a magic word. Yeah. Uh, any of the religious religions, these are magic words. And because they invoke uh, a group, an entire group right. of people that think, yeah. They say yeah to these magic words. So I'm suggesting universal birthright is a magic word. Sure. And that all we need to do, and this is the thing that's going to blow people's, first of all, their consciousness when they actually grok what I'm saying now. All we need to do is just say it. I'm with you, you know, I'm with you a thousand percent because I start to recognize that if you group peoples together, we are so much more powerful. Yeah. Exactly. And so, so and you're, we're, we're, man we're, we're managed by these uh, vertical concepts of groups. Right. Okay, so universal, here's what I say. If you get, if enough people in the world just say this, that it will manifest. That's what I say. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm saying the power of the word, that's how great it is. Whatever it takes to manifest it will manifest. Because it's an agreement. Yeah. And the, when humans agree, it creates sort of like a... Mm -hmm. And then another one... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the more agreement you have, it becomes like this like uh, energy sphere. Yeah. That permeates, and because pretty soon people will say, "What is this universal birthright shit? Yeah, what is it?" Mm -hmm. So we do a bunch of little um, TikTok things, like say, "Universal birthright is the seed of civilization." You know what's funny is that me and Andrew are actually working on that right now. We're actually working on building our subscriber list for TikTok for this exact purpose. But I would ask you this very question. Now, once we have people who jump on this, you know, bandwagon, so sort of say, and empower a group, well, how how do we delegate who is actually in control without making they're making sure there's a system in place to check them, you know, and make sure that they're responsible? We don't. There's no system that can stand up and the force of an actual spiritual movement and revolution. It's going to shake the souls of a lot of people because it's going to challenge, well, what is going to happen now when this idea, and here's how this idea shakes out on the street yeah. of Arabia. Okay. You have nothing but a fucking goat, right? Right. And a little one room thing made out of sandstone and you know, clay and stuff yeah you love the king he has a, you know and somebody gives you this idea that you have a claim a right to a share of the oil right 
what do you do? do you, you're a simple person. Nobody has said this before. I mean, this, all the religious leaders have basically said, bow down. Yeah. You know, all the governments say, bow down. Right. The communists say, they don't even say bow down, they just put a gun in your head. Yep. Now, so here's this idea. They go, they're going to go to their holy people, all in all the religions, and they're going to say, what, what's up with this idea? Because what you're thinking, universal birthright, as simple as it sounds, is original thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That goes back to the beginning, to, to birth. Right. You know, to birth. Yeah, yeah. So that's where we start, you know? And so... We're saying that we all have a claim to this, and that that's enough energy sure. to be a foundation for a new world, for what? a new civilization. Yeah. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking to myself, okay, so for the simple-minded person who doesn't know what to do with their share of the oil or their share of their resource, I mean, um, I, okay, so do we have a group that's in place to teach them how they can utilize their share or how what structure would be in place to make sure that people are yeah. are utilizing their resources that they're entitled to this is a it's a very good notion and question and just the kind of thing wild-eyed trucking radicals like myself you <laughs> don't like to hear but I will talk in general about how this kind of stuff happens. It's like creating a new energy supply. All of a sudden, you have, everybody has energy they didn't have before. Right. So what do we do with that energy? I don't know. Yeah. It's up to them. Uh -huh. You see, that's the empowerment of this thing. Yes. It doesn't need leadership. Yes. There isn't anywhere to lead people. Let them lead you. Yeah. To whatever. Right. You know, what we're, what, our, what we're interested in is that everybody agrees to these basic fundamental rules and that we all have our cut coming. Yeah. You know? No doubt. You know, how are you, each group of people going to organize themselves beyond that? It will be a revolution. Beginning, nothing. And it's going to rock the fucking earth like nothing has ever rocked the earth before. Yeah. With the women. Wow, that's interesting you say that. The women will be empowered. Yes. Economically. For the first time since, since the beginning. When they were the center of all attention. Right. And had godlike status. Oh. We drug the we killed we killed man and beast and drug it back to them. Yeah. That's how that's our natural the natural male spirit is basically like that. So but what I'm telling you, the the, the change that I mean we can go on for all there's gonna the kind of changes that are gonna happen people haven't even imagined even possible. Right. Because, no, we've never been free. No. We're on a fucking slave planet. Yeah, exactly. And nobody has told us we have a birthright. Exactly. A, which is like a way of identifying with one another for the purposes of judgment. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, and that's, uh, I, I'm so glad to hear you say this because... We, you know, it is a matter of time that it, we need to ha all, actually all hold this empowerment. But, um, you know, whereas I think like, you know, throughout, throughout ages, we've been automatically programmed to bow down or, you know, th that's what kind of worries me. But to put it into the hand of the person and that's where the revolution comes in, as you say, but more so... I find it absolutely, you know, like a breath of fresh air to say, put it in the power of women because, you know, their maternal instincts. Everyone, everyone is going to have the same power. It's just that women finally will not have to fucking suck your dick to survive. Yeah. They're not going to either. Yeah. 
you know, men are going to have to act in a kind of the same way you acted when you were like 18 years old and you were in front of somebody and all and, and somebody say what are you staring at and you say I'm staring at the most beautiful woman who has ever walked the streets of Circleville, Ohio. Yeah. So women are going to be, establish their natural power, return. It'll be returned to them, their share of the resources. Right. Because it was stripped away by the uh, patriarchy and by the religions. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, women, you can't have a wimp. There's no religion amongst women. You it's, can't have a religion. You know, it's so funny to hear you say that because my wife actually started, a, I don't know if you've seen it on Facebook, but a women's empowerment group. Well, she, she, there's only one thing that can empower women. One, there's only one thing. Yeah. Universal birthright. Right. I'm just telling you, there isn't, you're not talking any man out of any pussy rights as long as he is paying for the fucking bed. <laughs> right. That's the, you know, that's the cudgel that they've held over women forever. Yeah. So that's why this new age is, isn't something that, um, you know, people can get ready for. Yeah. Or you can't really plan because well, there are people, forerunners, females, that you can see it in them. You know, they have their own money, their own economic power. Right. So they act different, you know, they really do. Yes, yes, they do. They really do. <laughs> so, <clears throat> now, so that's going to be the biggest change amongst on, on humanity. But beyond that, what will uh, change is like, It'll be like a return to the garden 2.0. Hmm. Because, and we'll be able to do, show exactly if we took the revenue from all the fucking oil, gas, and coal that's produced, how much is that? What would that mean for everybody? You'll see that it is like the real deal. Right. It's way more than anyone thought. Oh yeah. And so we as people will now, you see, what would it take to actually bring this about? It depends on which country you're in, you know, but in general, everywhere you go, if enough people agree on something and are talking about something, it happens. Just like the 100 monkey theory. It happens. Yeah. It just happens. But, you know, I think using the same channels that are already existing and already in place is, is key. I mean, why would you disrupt life as it is right now? We're definitely not. The only People will still work in the oil wells. The only difference is, is they'll get paid plus a cut. Right. Right. You see, I mean, like, people, no, nobody's going to get rich on their cut. You know, because to be rich, you're going to have to do something yourself. Yeah. You'd have <laughs> that, to, you'd, that's the way life is. But you'd be good enough where every, everybody would be able to at least live. It's like I say, we nationalize the oil, gas, and coal to fund universally desired entitlements. Okay. Health care, retirement. Yeah. Education. Oh, that's number one. I mean, so much is being funded towards against everything education. And that's, to, I mean, ultimately, I think that's to keep us stupid, but that's... Well, people will spend a lot more time educating themselves if they actually have what I call like the, uh, the, the student's option. There will be people that will do nothing but go to universities for their whole life uh -huh. and live in a little fucking 
whatever it is that they can off their cut. Yeah, but the amount, a massive amount of debt that they come into. There won't be any debt. Right. If we but they're not going to live high. Yeah. On their cut. That makes sense. Enough for everyone. Yeah. But it, we will take out of the big pile health care, education, social Well, we're going to actually do away with Social Security. And all of the welfare programs. Yeah. Because, yeah, because everybody's going to get a cut and yeah, health care will be covered. And yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So I think... So it's easier to think about in terms, you know, of, of a future going on with, with 10 billion people. Yeah. Well, and so I think what what is the turning point and what is the breaking point that it comes to this? Now, I know that it's it's still with the with the select few that's taking advantage of all the resources. It's still take, take, take and leave nothing for the rest. Well, it comes to a point, I think, where we 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 reach into our pockets and we got nothing there. And the cost of everything, I mean, it's fifteen dollars for a bag of grapes. You know what I mean? And so I think the cost of everything keeps going up. We is that you think the turning point for for all of society where you know we start to wake up to this idea of universal birthright or when when do you think this you happens think so. you would think so but listen everything is is moving in alignment the events of the day the situation in the world the economy how fragile it is um, the fear that they've been able to generate, you know, in the people by just gaslighting them with like super turbines night and day. Right. You know, first Fox and the right wing gaslighting people about immigrants, gaslighting people about the COVID if you wore a mask or, or you know, just the election. You know, I'm you have concerned. to believe a lie. You have to believe in a lie with your whole heart to be on one side. The other side is totally fucking appalled. You know, so uh, what, 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 what does that mean? Well, what that means is that it's going to break down completely because Trump's refusal to accept the election and the amount of support he had to believe the lie actually was the end of the republic, a democracy, as, as we knew it. No, Total said, end. I mean, Joe Biden ended up being president. But as you see, the other side hasn't given up at all. Well, you see, I mean, I think that Joe Biden or whoever we've decided to put into power, it's, it's not working. Well, no, no, it's not working for anybody anywhere, exactly. no matter who's in power. Right. And the reason it's not working is that you, the, they're skimming everything off the top at all times. And the whole thing is shrinking. And the quality is getting worse. And, and the, the weather, the economies, the wars, the refugees, no, I mean, you got, nobody's on board. You got no, they're total, totally out of themselves. There's nothing anybody can think to do to stop what looks like this, this fucking hellscape sled to destruction and the end of it, the whole world. So that's, the more that happens, the more likely people are to want to hear about an actual solution. A solution, right, right. An actual way that, an idea that everybody on the earth can think. And if we think it, all of a sudden, magically, you see right, the wars go away. Yeah, yeah, and- Poverty, it goes like this. <laughs> right. How can you say that, they'll say. How can you say that? That's such a, he says that poverty is going to go like, how 
can anybody even, what could do that? What can do that is for everybody to realize that they have a birthright. Yeah. And, and that's our power. Yeah, and you know, I think... You see, people say, well, how is this going to happen? When enough of us agree, and by agreement, we don't even have to... Like, you're coming up with, well, what's the plan? What's the first step in the plan, and this and that and that? Mm -hmm. That even, that really is not... It's not that it's not important, and it's not that it will not manifest quickly and clearly. Yeah. It'll be things like people will want to know what universal birthright is really about. Let me read this whole fucking thing. Yeah. What are the others? Because you read Hardseed? Yeah, you read, yes. You know, Hardseed is a bunch of fucking heavy duty motherfucking ideas. <laughs> yes, it is. It's like yeah, as it revolutionary is. as anything that has ever been written yes. in any book. No you see, and people say, how can that be? <laughs> Well, it is. I mean, if you read well, it. Well, it is. You have to read it. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, you, so I'm saying now, that's it. Uh -huh. This is an entire vision of the future based on changing, uh, based on one idea. Right. That you have a birthright. Right. I know you don't think you do, but you can convince yourself. To have an idea of what the future looks like? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, no, I have that idea. I, I'm with you 100% on board on this. I'm, I'm more of a technical person and like to see what steps does it take to get there. And so... It I, takes getting this word, the magic word out. First of all, just getting it out in a million places. So a million... Because you don't even need to say it. All you have to do is look at it. Right. Or hear it. Yeah. All right. To do a TikTok, Reels, uh, Instagram, this, that, yeah, yeah. boom, 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 boom. People are going to be looking for a solution. When it, when this thing starts to crumble, I mean, it's... They're going to be looking for a solution. You see, that's the way I am. You know, so I like trying to look down the line. Right. It's important. That's important. For many generations to come, for just the reality that we live in and everything. Right. Because I have found that to be in the right place at the right time is really sweet. Very rare, but really sweet. Really rare, but really sweet. And once you've ever tasted it to any extent, you kind of spend the rest of your life trying to... Figure trying out, to chase it. How could that happen again? Yeah. Did you have you been listening to my podcast? I sure have. Did yeah. you listen to the last one? I haven't listened to the last one. Oh just my yet. God. The last two actually I haven't listened to. You're really missing it, Cole. I've been following. Lately. I've been following you, uh, like on every single one, and up to these last two. But I mean, that's huge. We're, I mean, these these are stories that happen to you. It's the truth. Listen, the next two. Like the last one I just posted is uh, is entitled Amsterdam, first pitch, eight million dollars. That's and that's pretty nuts, man. Yeah, Dad. That's... When you fucking and so I because I knew that if they saw eight million, oh yeah, they're gonna want what eight million. I don't care. I, even if I don't like this guy, eight million what uh, you know. That's eight crazy. Million. First pitch, eight million dollars, and it's the episode of my first pitch in Amsterdam to at the Mies Pierce Bank. That's crazy. Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's and, crazy. And, 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 and I I lay out the whole pitch, wow. just like it fucking happened. Wow. Oh man, I gotta listen to it now. You do. I, I gotta mean, listen because, to that thing. And and because you, you'll know it's true. You say, like, this is the these are the exact fucking words this nigger used to get eight million fucking dollars. That's amazing. Well, I'm gonna uh, and and you realize also that that pitch yeah was the totality of the company. Assets. 
Ah. We had no product. We had no sales. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm talking about riding into fucking Amsterdam. You're out of your mind, but it's great out of your mind. It's good. <laughs> it's, it's totally cool. <laughs> That's amazing. It is. Oh man, I can't I can't uh, tell you enough how uh, how much I'm really looking forward to this actualizing because it will. I know it will. It has to. Yeah, it's up to you now to figure out. You're supposed to be a technical engineer of some sort. Yeah. Uh, how how many times we can get those words that this idea uh, out there. Say that again. I'm sorry. How you have to figure out how to get universal birthright in whatever form. Oh, you're right. Not, not explain, just print it out. Or I, when I told Andrew, I says, "What would really be cool is uh, millions of people just saying, just saying, universal birthright." Right. Right. Well, that's where that's where the funneling and all the all the If we could turn it into through. a TikTok. Uh, That's our goal. We're on our way. In other words, we say another. It'll be a contest to see who can say universal birthright the coolest. Yeah, we're we're figuring it out. We're getting we're getting a, a gathering of subscribers first, and then we're going to be. <coughs> but this has been Clifton Milton <coughs> yeah. and Nelson Guerra in a formal interview. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. All right, no. That's good stuff, man. I'm glad we came over for that. I came over for that. That's fantastic.